last video, I thought I'd answer two of the questions that are difficult to answer um, without knowing uh, certain rules within the FAA. Yes, I'm building the world's smallest twin engine airplane. Those two questions would be, number one, can you fly a Cree-Cree, which is a twin engine aircraft, without having a twin engine rating? Um, and it took me a long time to find out the real answer to that question. Because if you looked on some of the forums, some people would post out there and say, well, it's got twin engines, but they're so close together, it doesn't create any uh, dissimilar flight characteristics when one of the engine fails therefore it's treated as if it was a single engine airplane and so that's why you don't need a twin engine rating and I had seen posts like that on several occasions and thought to myself well that doesn't provide a rule for the FAA to certify your aircraft or certify you as a pilot as not requiring a twin engine rating. It's got two engines on it, it's a twin engine. So how can people fly this airplane without requiring a twin engine rating? Because all I ever heard was, no, you don't need a twin engine rating, but nobody could really tell me from an FAA CFR requirement as to why I can fly that without requiring a t twin engine rating. Um, and so it wasn't until I saw a post on the Mosquito Helicopter Forum uh, that I really understood why. And if you don't know what a Mosquito Helicopter is, look it up. It's a, it's a neat little experimental single seat helicopter. Uh, it's a phenomenal aircraft. Um, but anyway, so somebody had posted out on the Mosquito Helicopter Forum and said, you don't need a helicopter license to fly a Mosquito Helicopter. And they weren't talking about the Mosquito helicopter that you, that you can build as an ultralight, which doesn't require a helicopter license. They were talking about the full-blown uh, experimental class helicopter that you didn't need a helicopter rating uh, to fly it. And I thought, well, how can that be? Number one, it's silly to think that you could fly a helicopter without either a helicopter license or at least soloing it as, as a helicopter pilot. Um, just because of the safety factor, but they said, no, if you had a fixed wing, single engine land license that you could hop into a mosquito helicopter rated as an experimental class and fly it without a helicopter license. And I had to do a lot of research to actually track this down because nobody could tell me why you could do that either. And I thought, well, this is strange. Um, but they did mention that there was something in the FAA regulations that said if it was an experimental class that you didn't require a type rating um, to fly an experimental class um, aircraft that had a single seat in it. So I had to do some digging, had to do some research, I had to find this out. Where does it state this? CFR 61.31 is type rating requirements, additional training and authorization requirements. And if you actually scroll down near the bottom of CFR 61.31, there is an exemption section. And it's actually under section I uh, called exemptions. I'm sorry, exceptions. Uh, so section I is exceptions. It says this section does not require a category and class rating um, for aircraft not type certified as airplanes, rotorcraft, gliders, lighter than aircraft, powered lift, power parachutes, and weight shift control aircraft. And under there, it says the holder of a pilot certificate when operating an aircraft under the authority of, and section B, an experimental certificate unless the operation involves carrying a passenger. Now, from what I understand then is that, and, and this has been validated by, you know, other verified by other people, um, that single seat experimental aircraft do not require a type rating, meaning that you don't have to have a helicopter type rating, or you don't have to have a multi-engine rating, or you don't have to have whatever other various 
ratings are required on single seat experimental aircraft. Um, I think the only one I know of that definitely does qualify is if it's turbine powered or jet powered. Um, if you're, for example, the, 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 the Sonics, um, Subsonics jet, which is jet powered, does require special uh, rating or training requirements in order to fly that aircraft. I know that just from looking at the uh, articles within Kit Planes magazine that talks about, uh, you know, building and flying a Subsonics jet. Uh, but things like multi-engine rating, even helicopter ratings are not required for experimental class, uh, specifically for single seat, because uh, from what I understand, the, there are no equivalent training aircraft. In most cases, that you could use to get proper training for multi-engine, for example, in a Creekery. What are you going to fly from a multi-engine perspective that is going to provide proper training to be able to fly a Cree Cree better than if you just did, you know, certain, uh, you know, training on your own. Um, it doesn't make sense because all twin engine aircraft that you're going to fly in are going to be huge aircraft in comparison. They're not even going to be similar flight characteristics. Um, so again, that's why you can fly a Cree Cree without requiring a multi-engine rating. Um, it's actually listed right in the uh, CFRs under 61.31. So now let's talk about the jet powered Creekry because that's another one that comes up also is, you know, it, am I building a jet powered Creekry? Um, you know, if you go and look up a Creekry on the, uh, the internet, you'll find a lot of Creekries you'll see out there with um, jet powered. There's been one in Australia. Uh, there's been several in Europe. There's been at least four or five that I know of that have been built that have been jet powered. Um, you'll find that you don't see any in the United States. And here's the reason why. The FAA actually has a minimum fuel requirement. CFR 91.151, fuel requirements for flight in VFR conditions says this. No person may begin a flight in an airplane under VFR conditions unless Considering wind and forecast and weather conditions, there is enough fuel to fly to the first point of intended landing and assuming normal cruising speed, must be able to, during the day, fly to that point and after that for at least 30 minutes. Um, there's other restrictions for night flying uh, and other requirements for rotorcraft. Um, but what, what that's trying to say is the FAA wants you to plan that when you're taking off from some place and flying to another place, that you give yourself 30 minutes of extra fuel taking into account wind and weather conditions um, to your destination. Um, now, what if you're taking off from one airport and landing at the same airport? Um, you know, you're still supposed to take into account if you're going off flying for a while, doing some practice flights, and then returning to the same airport, that whatever you're planning to do, that when you land, that you plan for having at least 30 minutes of fuel left. And part of that is because what if you take off, you, you leave the current uh, airport and there's an accident at that airport and you can't return to the airport because it's closed, uh, or for some other reason that airport is closed and you have to divert to another airport. They're trying to give you that 30 minutes of fuel to get to a diverted airport or have to fly around the pattern for more than one or two or three times and burning that extra 30 minutes of fuel. It's a, it's a safety thing. The FAA is trying to prevent people from running out of fuel when out flying around. Now, what the FAA is though telling you is, is you're supposed to plan for that, plan to have that 30 minutes of fuel. It doesn't mean you need to land with 30 minutes of fuel on board. That's not what they're saying. They're not going to ticket you if you land with 15 minutes of fuel or 10 minutes of fuel. But what it's basically saying though is you can't take off with less than 30 minutes of fuel. 30 minutes of fuel is the minimum requirement to take off, go somewhere and land, assuming you don't fly anywhere. Um, so the problem with the Cree Cree and having it jet powered and you know having uh, you know full power use of your fuel being gone in 16 minutes. And that's not including taxi time and, and all the other fuel that's burned doing takeoff and landing. Um, 
There isn't enough fuel with six gallons of gas, even at what could be estimated a cruise speed, to be able to take off and land uh, and have 30 minutes of fuel. Um, when you can't even probably at cruise estimates be able to take off and fly somewhere uh, on, on, on what's considered 30 minutes of fuel. Um, so that's why you really don't see jet powered Krikris, I believe in the United States is that there just isn't enough fuel that you can get on board with a Krikri to be able to fly with jets on. Um, so uh, again, uh, unless you're able to figure out a way of like, there's uh, the Australian Krikri that's uh, flown out there. They actually added, I think one and a half gallon um, tip tanks onto the wings of the Krikri. They actually extended the wings. I don't know if it's 16 inches, 12 inches. I'm not really sure. Um, they put fuel tanks on the wing tips and they were able to get an additional, I think, three gallons of fuel. Um, you know, that type of thing might get you past that 30 minute minimum of fuel requirement. Um, but uh, again, um, you know, that's changing structurally the aircraft that's taking away its aerobatic capability um, and, and some of the other things that, you know, to me are, are why you're building a Krikri to begin with. Although the jets would be cool, again, unless you can get, uh, let's say 45 minutes of cruise fuel on that airplane, you really can't take off, fly somewhere and land. Um, and so, you know, then even with the jets on it, your airplane just turns into a pattern aircraft. You're just gonna be able to fly around the pattern and land, provided you can prove that you've got at least 30 minutes of cruise fuel on, on board. Hopefully that answers the questions that I think commonly can come up with regarding uh, a Krikri and some of those very, you know, big issues, you know, am I jet power, am I building a jet powered aircraft and do I require a, um, a multi-engine rating and hopefully those, you know, point to the actual CFRs that tell you, um, you know, whether you can and cannot do that. Um, so hopefully that's answered your questions. Thanks.